Hello, my name is Jo Mitchell and I'm the STEM Enrichment Coordinator at STEM Learning. I am delighted to welcome Sajid Rajiani from Blue Option Limited to Catalyst Magazine Live. Sajid, over to you. Hello everyone. My name is Sajid and I'm currently working as a product manager for one of the exciting startup called as Blue Optima. I have approximately around 12 years of experience in building really innovative products uh, in, in domains of pharma, data engineering, and AIML. The topic that I'm going to speak today is about how AI has been deeply engrossed in our day to day activities. Now, it starts from the moment we wake up in the morning, the whole day, and when we come back at home after our school or work. So, believe it or not, the AI is everywhere. We may notice in few areas, but today I'll take you down the road where AI starts the moment you open your eyes. Now, before I go into how AI works or what is AI, I would like to tell you how AI comes into real life. Now, these comes only when you build some cool products, and uh, that's how I am all around on the product for, for almost a decade. Now, speaking a bit about my experience, I have around 12 years of experience in creating these innovative products using AI. I am a QE Prize ambassador. I'm a STEM ambassador as well, and a product management coach, along with advisor to some really cool startups. Now, speaking of the product management, what exactly is product management? How does that relate to AI? Now, product management is a very broad and interesting concept. In this, we actually define uh, idea to reality. Let's say you and your friends have some idea. Let's build this stuff. This idea is great, but how do you bring that idea into reality? That's the product management. Product management helps you to define an idea, look out if this idea is successful, and then make it in real life and take it to the general public. I, as a product manager, is responsible for connecting the three important elements while you build the product. That is user experience, the technology that builds, and the business side of the product. So all in three, I stand in the middle as a product manager. Going a bit on what I have been doing or where I have worked so far, and I've been able to work in some cool, uh, cool organizations like Time Inc. It's a media company, the Time Magazine. That's where you come from. The ZS Associates is a pharma analytics company which helps build analytics around how do we create some good medicines. The LTI is a company in data analytics which does a lot of research under how we can do or rather extract data better. Citibank, we know everyone, we know this, we know this bank and it's a financial organization. Uh, we must aware about the cards that we use for Citibank. And lastly, Blue Optima, where I'm currently working, it's into productivity and security products company. What is AI? Now, AI is a very broad concept and we often confuse between AI and ML. So if you see on the right side of the screen, we have the AI as a whole in which we have machine learnings. And then on the deeper down, we have deep learnings. I'll quickly touch upon the definitions of these. So AI is, is in, in a broader term of, of how intelligently or smartly the applications or softwares can behave. Whereas machine learning at the other end is ability to give these softwares or ability to train these softwares to do things by themselves. Now that's a, that's a differentiation right now, putting it to a broader umbrella. Now, touching upon where exactly the AI is in right now in, in the current landscape, AI is doing really good stuff and we all know that chat GPT is a buzzword in the market everyone knows about, isn't it? Right. So if I have to put it into context, how chat GPT is evolving, and mainly there are three areas where we can anyone, even even a even a a, a kid who is barely known to computers will be able to use chat GPT. And that's in the fields of content, media, and entertainment. There are three fields where ChatGPT is extensively used and, and the future about those 
businesses is going to be at a boom. The second field that I see the AI is coming into picture is the medical imaging. If you see there's an image on the right side where there's an X-ray image of a hand. If I have to pick three years back timeline, I would see it was not that advanced. There's a doctor who will look at the image and prescribe you the medicines or the next steps or the diagnosis out of it. Right now, the precision at which the diagnosis are at a higher scale. And not just this, we'll further cover in the next slides where exactly AI is helping in the uh, medical domains or the healthcare domains. But let's let's take a step back and look at how exactly AI is involved in our day to day activities. Now the first thing that we do when we wake up and I know most of the kids and most of the adults would do is check their phones. Now without even noticing that AI starts the moment you wake up. Now the smartphones are enabled with the facial recognitions, the cameras to make the awesome images and the voice recognitions to take, you know, hey Siri, can you do this? Hey Alexa, can you do this? So that's where things start evolving when, when, you, when you speak of AI. The second next thing that usually people do is check the social medias and, and, and we'll deep down into the social media is the moment you open the content, the feed, the images, everything is catered as per your choice without noticing even that the algorithms are following you, every clicks, every likes, and every scrolls that you make, everything is fed into an AI algorithm. The third thing that you would see is you might have Googled a, a, a pair of shoes you really liked about it. You've Googled it a couple of times, but the moment you open your Facebook or any social media, you will see that same ad popping up there. Now, how does that happen? So AI actually is tracking the, the clicks that you have made, the likes that you have made you, the, the options or interest that you have shown, everything is bundled and that becomes a feed for AI to show you something really relevant to what you are interested in. Now that, that develops the individual taste and the content is catered accordingly. Now moving on to a little advanced state of AI where the, the smart homes comes into picture. Now, I, I, I could not elaborate enough on these, but lately in the last uh, couple of years, the smart homes have pick up, picked up the pace. We can now see the smart speakers coming into play, the thermostats to manage your heat, and uh, the times that you want to enter your home, the security systems, everything adapts to your usage. Now, you may not notice this, but there are, there are studies which actually focuses on human behavior to cater best needs as smart homes. Now, all in all, there are various examples, but to, to keep it concise, the AI is involved much more than you can ever imagine. Now, what's next? This is all so far what we are looking into it, but what exactly AI is heading towards? Now, in coming years, you would actually see we, can ab we will be able to predict the diseases beforehand. Maybe we can, you know, stop a heart attack before even the heart attack occurs. Maybe we can, you know, predict a cancer before a cancer is actually identified. These AI models will be able to precisely tell you in what timeline a person may have a heart attack, a cancer, or even worse. That's that's where the AI is heading. The second thing that I can see is there are a lot of online hacks or data thefts or security breaches that has happened recently. Now AI in finance is going to help you avoid those. They are going to help you stop any data theft or hacks even before it can occur. The moment there is a one step into malicious activity, things will be notified. Now moving on to the very fun part, the education. Now we've seen the education system has mildly evolved. When I say mildly evolved, the, the way of learning, the process of learning is predominantly the same if I have to take a decade ago. That's going to change and that's a good news. And how it's going to change? It's completely based on augmented reality. You know, the, 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 the glasses, the smart glasses that you would wear to see 
in everything into 3D, the everything into augmented reality. So imagine if you are studying a biology subject and you want to understand how cell works, or you want to understand how the 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 mitochondria works. Those will be at a zoomed in image, and you'll be able to understand the subjects at very precise level. The subjects will be really interesting, and the math will become more fun. So that's the augmented reality coming into picture where you'll be able to you will to learn the subjects into much closer vicinity. Now we all we all are aware about the climate change that is happening. The the temperatures, the 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 winters are really cold and the summers are really hot. Now how can we do something about it? AI comes into the picture and it will help you give energy optimization around it, how we can best use the energy or the source of energy that is coming into our households. Smart grids, can we predict something using the climate models? We can we can study the data, we can understand what the data is trying to tell us, and we can take necessary informed decisions after it. And lastly, we can also have environmental monitoring across globe. If you see there's an image on the right side which shows a heat map across globe, now that can be avoided if we know the the heat is going to be high, let's say in the summer. What are the steps that we need to take beforehand so that we don't have that heat wave? I'm not sure if we can stop anything in that, but at least we can take some preventive measures beforehand. Now moving on to the last bit where I would like to focus on how I am involved in the whole AI journey. Currently, I'm building a product using AI to stop hacking. Now, hacking has different ways, but at least we can make our products self-sufficient that they cannot be hacked to a, to a larger extent. Previously, I have worked with softwares using AI to build some really highly efficient car batteries. Now, these batteries are used in the EV cars and various other uh, sources, but they, they are really, really good. I have been involved in making the elevators really safe and secure, working with some really multi organizations who build elevators. And lastly, I was also involved in making some highly innovative medicines to cure some really bad diseases. Now, that's 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 where I really found my way out, where I thought AI is the next thing that I need to get involved to help people. This is all about me and I'll wait for any questions that you have and I can answer those. Thank you. OK, we have a question for you from the chat. When people are developing technology involving AI, should they be having considerations about the ethics involved behind it, whether there should be a code of ethics or how should we look to protect our futures? Yes, so the code of ethics or the ethical AI what we term into our language is very important. And there are some rules that goes in while you build something on AI. Now, I understand the, the AI is just catching up, but uh, the rules to regulate or the regulatory rules to use AI is something that, that is at the core. And not just to make sure that we use AI uh, responsibly, but also to set some guidelines that AI itself behaves by its own into those limitations. Now, there are rules that are coming up from the EU, the European unions, uh, the UK is coming up with their regulations on how to use AI. And, and in general, the, the, world, the world AI uh, organizations are actually working towards how effectively we can use it. So yes, it definitely starts the journey with setting some rules and then placing some objectives. What is the outcomes of the AI? A second question for you is, should we be concerned about AI? Many people have built in fear from watching movies such as Terminators. How far away are we from AI being able to have that kind of functionality? OK, I can answer you that if I can go back in future and tell you when exactly that's going to happen. Um, but um, this is my personal opinion and the way I see how AI is evolving. We are at least 100 years to see that day, but there's a lot of lot of work that still needs to go to make AI more mature 
Um, you can say that AI is right now a five year old kid who is trying to learn something and trying to make best out of it. So far, I have not heard or seen any AI threats or AI stories that could actually harm humans or or at least I can say, you know, which has potential to harm humans. Now we do see there's a lot of buzz in the market that AI may take our jobs or AI will replace so many people. I don't think so. In my pure perspective, AI is here to augment things that we do. It will help us to do things better, quicker and effectively. So at least a hundred years just to put a number to it. Uh, we don't see any threat. Uh, we did see some experiences in past where AI models were trying to communicate with each other. Now we are still not sure if that was good or bad, but just that was something that we did not anticipate or know exactly what's happening. So I see we are in safe hands at least for now. Wonderful, thank you. I I love finally I've been able to ask that question to somebody <laughs> and, and get a, and get an answer. Um, we have a very interesting final question from the audience. With the upcoming innovation in augmented reality with AI, do you see that as a challenge where people start to live in the illusion world and start to disconnect from reality? Okay, so so to answer that. We did see recently uh, there are devices coming up right now which will take you to a new level of augmented reality. Uh, with, with these glasses, uh, we'll be able to experience uh, the, the illusion or rather I would say uh, the graphical way of looking at things uh, at a very mature level. But I doubt that people would, you know, spend their whole time into that. Um, maybe, maybe not, but I, I see that would actually help into more, more uh, or rather effective outputs in the way we do things. For example, if we are into designing or uh, let's say a civil engineer or an architect who are designing things, they would be able to see things really closely into that augmented reality or illusion world rather than on, on a computer screen. So I see that there, there's a way to look at this into a scientific way, but I don't see people will choose to live into uh, an illusion world. To be honest, you really need to have to come out of that, have food, or you need to do your, some physical activities, walk, jog, run, play, so many things that would not happen in, in an augmented reality. But I am uh, a little worried because the way we are so attached to social medias and the way we uh, spend so much time on uh, the OTT platforms. Now I see in a similar context how AR could also be another platform where people would like to connect for leisure. So that's how I see it, but, but not like completely into it for, for a very long period of time. That was a great answer to our final question, bringing our session to a close. Thank you, Sajid, for challenging us in our perceptions of artificial intelligence and the exciting use of it in our lives. You have given us thought-provoking answers from terminators to augmented reality. We can look forward to amazing future developments that we can embrace in our lives. It is wonderful to hear about you and your work and to see how computing careers are paving the way to an AI-led future. Thank you to our audience joining us today and for the questions you put to Sajid. Don't forget to join us for our next live event. You can find it on Eventbrite and catch up on our other sessions in the YouTube playlist. Goodbye and thank you for watching.